Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over a quick way to identify gypsum and its anhydrous form, anhydrite, using the polarized light microscope. But first, a brief disclaimer, because we all need them nowadays. Gypsum is typically observed as irregularly shaped grains, often with one perfect to good cleavage plane. Crystals can be present as elongated rhombohedra thanks to perfect to good cleavage and fracture planes. However, due to the soft nature of gypsum, this is not typical when observing fine, loose grains. There's also a variety of gypsum called satin spar that can produce beautiful acicular fibers and fiber bundles. However, due to the soft nature of gypsum, this is not typical when observing fine, loose grains. When viewed under cross polars, the extinction angle of gypsum often appears to roll across the surface. This is due to the soft nature of the mineral that often results in slightly curved crystal masses. Gypsum has a moderate refractive indices around 1.519 to 1.53. A rapid way to check the refractive indices is to place the particles in the 1.528 refractive index liquid. Your grains under a central stop dispersion staining should yield a blue to slight magenta color. Now as I've mentioned, gypsum has a moderate refractive indices of roughly 1.52 to 1.53. The anhydrous phase of the mineral, anhydrite, has a refractive indices of 1.567 up to 1.618. So there is a very good gap between the two which we can use to our advantage. But first, let's take a quick look at anhydrite mounted in 1.592 refractive index media. You'll find the grains exhibit less irregularity than gypsum. In addition, the cleavage and fracture are much more distinct. This is all due to the fact that anhydrite has a higher hardness, 3 to 3.5, versus gypsum at only 2. This is a direct result of it being an anhydrous mineral, whereas gypsum is carrying with it two water molecules. Here you can see the irregular feathered edges common to the softer gypsum grains compared to the clean cleavage or fracture of the anhydrite. In addition, gypsum tends to contain deformations in the surface compared to the relatively clean crystals observed in its anhydrous sibling. A quick check in 1.592 refractive index liquid reveals that anhydrite will give you a vibrant blue and yellow dispersion staining color using the central stop dispersion lens. Remember we talked about the separation between the two minerals RIs? Well here is where 155 liquid comes in handy for a quick separation of the two minerals. Gypsum's dispersion colors will shift towards the blue to blue-white wavelengths, while anhydrite's higher RI will yield a shift to the yellows. Here you can see the dramatic change under central stop dispersion staining. Under plain polarized light, the gypsum appears grainy and tan in color, with the Becky lines flowing into the higher RI liquid whereas anhydrite is transparent with distinct Becky lines flowing into the crystals. Here we come to the end of our little tutorial on gypsum. We also covered its sister mineral, anhydrite. There's one other, and that's bastonite, which I did not go over, but it's mostly found as plaster of Paris and produced by heating gypsum to drive off the bound water. It typically is not observed as the mineral bastonite since it tends to absorb moisture and revert back to its dihydrate form. All of this information and more can be found online or any number of mineralogy texts printed since the dawn of time. Thanks for watching.